Mitch, thank you so much for joining us today. And I'd love for you to tell the class um, how you got into this particular aspect of geosciences for a career from your educational background and what it is an oil and gas geologist actually does. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, well, thanks for having me today. I uh, always appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit about um, this industry and, and uh, you know, kind of tell you guys about some, uh, some of the possible routes you can take out there with um, a geoscience degree. So I started with a bachelor's degree in geology. Um, and I would say the oil and gas and taking kind of the, the mineral or uh, exploration route in the geoscience world is definitely um, more geology and, and rock focused. So um, I have the traditional geology degree and um, in order to kind of tailor my education to, to allow myself to eventually take this type of route, um, when I was doing my bachelor's, I had a lot of um, sediment, sedimentology and stratigraphy background, um, as well as a little bit of more applied coursework. Um, and that allowed or kind of set me up with the educational foundation I needed to um, eventually get into into this lane and so it, uh, yeah basically a lot of sedimentology and stratigraphy and then as well as um, in my bachelor's I did undergraduate research um, that also was more focused on um, reservoir properties in the subsurface and kind of like I said just tailoring my education to um, to this more specific lane of, of sedimentary rock and um, the processes that kind of create reservoirs and, and govern um, subsurface fluid flow and, and uh, fluid accumulations in, in the ground. Did you know that's what you wanted to do? Um, it was something that I had in mind. It was you know, one of the potential applications of a geology degree. Um, and it wasn't something I knew for sure that I wanted to do until I took my first sedimentology course in my bachelor's. And from there, I figured out that, that those were the kind of topics and the kind of rocks that really were exciting to me. And oil and gas or um, any sort of subsurface fluid extraction was the, the most direct application of those concepts that I was really excited about. And so from there, it was, it was pretty clear that I wanted to do something along those lines. And um, at that point, that's when I more kind of started tailoring the coursework that I selected to, to try to go down this route. And whether it was oil and gas or groundwater or helium or, or other gas extraction, I, I wasn't entirely sure. Um, but yeah, that, that's definitely what I would, if you were to be interested, that's something I'd recommend is just, you know, setting yourself up with a strong foundation with more uh, sedimentology and stratigraphy is definitely um, what's, what's the most important for this field, as well as some structural geology, um, which is also really important. So that's kind of how I started off. Um, like I said, I did some, did an undergrad research project that was more focused on um, evolution of an aquifer in Arizona, um, but that also kind of strengthened my background and um, set me up for a job that I got right out of school um, with a helium exploration company, which was uh, it's similar to oil and gas and in, in, in some of the, the uh, data that you use and, and um, workflows for trying to extract a, a different kind of resource from similar reservoir rocks. Um, but from there, it, uh, it wanted to quickly transition into, into a lane that had a little bit more um, uh, potential upward mobility in terms of a career. So I decided to come back to school um, and get a master's in geology, which uh, definitely is, is pretty much necessary these days. Um, to get into the oil and gas industry, it's kind of the, the industry standard of, of the level of education that they really require to get into this line of work. Um, and so 
from there, that's, I came, came to Montana, started a master's in geology that's focused on um, kind of some of the similar topics of reservoir evolution and um, studying some rocks in Texas um, to, to help better understand um, the, the geologic processes that have led to the formation of um, some oil and gas reservoirs in South Texas. So that's kind of the, the route I've taken. Um, uh, apart from just coursework, I think a, a few of the other things that really allowed me to, to break into the industry and, and get those first jobs were for sure the, the undergrad research um, that kind of sets you apart from uh, most other folks who just do their degree and get out the door. Um, but also, I, you know, this is probably within, as, as it goes for any industry, but, you know, the networking and the connections you make along the way. So I, I was involved in um, some, this, you know, student chapters for um, the American Association of Petroleum Geologists and um, as well as the, the local geologic society um, where I did my undergrad. And through that, I was able to meet a lot of really great people and um, just get exposed to, to some of the career paths that are out there and, and folks that eventually ended up helping me get into the industry. So um, yeah, with that, it's, that's, those would be my biggest recommendations is to, you know, I guess for what, whatever you want to do, kind of tailor your coursework to build, your, build a strong foundation and then, um, you know, leverage all of the, the uh, the help that's out there because people who are in, in all, whatever industry, they want to help you. So um, yeah, that's, that's where I'd started. So this summer, I, I had an internship with SM Energy Company, um, which kind of allowed me to get into the oil and gas world. And I guess just kind of to think about the day-to-day -day life of what you do as a petroleum geologist. Um, it was, uh, I guess, really cool. It's, it's a really cool way to be exposed to a lot of different kinds of data and, uh, a, wealth, and a wealth of data that is at the pretty much highest quality um, of any industry that, that you'd be able to work in um, with a geology degree. It's, you know, they, um, and it, it, examples of the data that, that you're working with are any, anything, um, so subsurface data that they acquire through drilling wells or um, taking seismic surveys, which is basically just taking a big um, radar view of the subsurface and then starting to piece together all of the, the properties of the rock, um, the fluids that are in the rock, and everything that kind of comes together to form a hydrocarbon reservoir and integrating all this data together um, to try and piece together the story, plan where next wells are going and understand the, the system as it is. Um, and through doing that, um, we looked at, I guess this summer, I worked on an exploration project where I had access to um, data from thousands of wells where it just really allowed me to to leverage that data, piece together a whole story, um, and work on trying to tackle some, some really interesting problems and, and questions that arose. And um, I, I find that to be the coolest part of the job, is the, the wealth of information you have to work with, and then being able to apply that towards um, basically the hunt of you know knowing that there's something out there, and um, you get you get all of all of these resources to to go look for it and find it. Um, it was also really cool um, through through this job. I worked with uh, a, just a, a multidisciplinary team across the company. Um, it's you know very integrated from geologists working with engineers and. Um, land folks um, trying to just put the whole project together. Um, and so that, that was really cool to me that there's, there was a really strong social part of it as well as just doing really excellent science. You know, as a combination of being able to, to 
come together with a lot of different disciplines to try and um, you know bring oil to the market and and uh, you know solve and answer these complex problems and also one of the coolest parts of the industry is you do this really complex and and interesting science and then unlike a lot of other fields you get to test it directly by putting a well in the ground and oftentimes that either answers your questions directly or it just opens up a can of worms of a hundred new questions that you have that you then have all the the data at your disposal to go and and try and solve those so um, I guess just a typical day in my in my job I looked at a lot of well logs which are basically you can draw on the board um, when they drill a well they take measurements all the way down the well bore with equipment that is attached to the drill bit and they measure properties of the rock and what you get is a log response that I guess with depth you get a measurement and you get a log response and you can start to look at this log response and the different types of data that they um, acquire from a number of different types of logs and start to correlate from one well to the next across a basin. So if they're drilling in the subsurface and they drill two wells side by side, you can start to you know, draw these correlations of that is probably similar to that in the subsurface. And then when you have thousands of wells, you can start to um, leverage some really powerful software that we use to integrate all this data and um, start to get a really cool picture of the rocks in the subsurface and then pair that with um, you know, some of the, the data of you know, what's producing from where and start to piece the whole story together. So I worked on a project where I did a lot of correlating well logs and integrating it with a range of other data to try and um, assess the potential of a new area outside of the company's existing acreage. Um, that after I left my internship, it's, uh, it was picked up by other, other employees there and they're still running with it. So um, it, it's cool to, to be able to have these ideas and then start just piecing all the, the pieces of the puzzle together and um, eventually see where it goes. Yeah, so I mean, top skills, I would say. Data analysis? Yeah, data analysis and integration. Um, obviously, a strong geologic background and, you know, uh, sedimentology really is, is the, the key for, for getting into this industry. Um, and then also, just one thing that I really gained this summer and was not as prepared for as I wish I would have been was the, the soft skills. Um, so interpersonal skills, it, you're working with people, uh, it, you know, it's, a, it's really a team effort. You're, you know, you're, this is never something that, uh, like these types of projects that you bite off are never something that, can, that one person can do. So you're leveraging the help of you know, like I said, engineers and, and folks from across a range of disciplines and being able to effectively communicate your discipline to somebody who doesn't know what the hell you're talking about when it comes to rocks is, is really important. So, um, yeah, I'd say those were those are the, the top skills for sure. Um, what was the last point you wanted? Um. I mean, you kind of had a track where you were planning this for your whole career. A lot of times I ask my guests um, if you could redo, is there what, something you wish you had have known and prepared for in advance, or redo in your background to prepare yourself better for your career? Yeah, I mean, yeah, like you said, it, from early on in my bachelor's, it was pretty clear I wanted to go this route or something similar. Um, however, one thing I will mention when it comes to 
similar routes is um, this is uh, an industry and kind of an overall line of or sector or sect of geosciences that um, the skill sets you build through oil and gas or a you know related topic of um, you know subsurface reservoir development and, and resource production. Um, those are skill sets that lend themselves really well across a number of other fields. So um, what I've gained through working in oil and gas, you know, I could easily pivot and take those same skill sets and apply them towards um, carbon capture and sequestration and storage. Um, water, you know, groundwater extraction. Um, I, I already mentioned that I, for a short time I was in helium production, which is you know, a non-flammable, non-hydrocarbon gas that's used for completely different purposes, but... Um, not just party balloons. Yeah, not just part, or flotation, as they call it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an industry that allows you to, to gain these, these really applicable skill sets that, um, you know, you can take, take and run with in a number of different areas, whether that's, you know looking for anything under the ground, basically. And, you know, as a society, we, like Natalie mentioned, it's not just for, for energy, but it's for everything we do. Um, so it's, it's a pretty cool field. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah. Does anyone have anything they would like to ask of Mitch? Fiona. Yeah, definitely not my wheelhouse. Um, I would probably pass that along to like a manager or something, like let somebody else answer that question. Um, overall, I mean, personally, I don't, I don't feasibly, I don't actually see any like meaningful transition happening in my lifetime. Um, but uh, like Natalie had previously mentioned, the the oil that we extract, it's not whether we're using it for for energy or everything else that we use in society, we'll always need it. So um, there will always be um, an application for this type of stuff. And, and uh, if not fossil fuels or um, oil and gas, then any other resource that is, is needed for society. But it's a good question. It's a great question. And um, I think even if you asked a manager, uh, the broadening of these fields into uh, like BP energy went into more um, applications and renewables. Um, even with that, this, this question gets to a bigger systemic societal change that is not going to happen from the industry out. It's going to happen from the population in. So it has to happen with policy change, with governmental change, with business and economics change, with trade change. This is why in this field, in this general education course, if this is something that interests you as a poli-sci major, as a business major, as a communication major, as a whatever your major is, if every system, if every realm wants to make that change, then maybe we'll get a change. But it's not gonna happen by protesting and demanding the oil companies that are providing jobs decide to stop producing. Because as I preface this whole thing, literally everything you're using is derived from oil. And the more we know that, the better off we'll be able to be to have the groundwork to make a change. Once you start instituting your carbon fiber writing implements and your glass which is also a whole other ball of wax of resources that are, we're running out of. There's so many parts that go into it. It's not just burning of fossil fuels, which is hard. And we don't have answers in, in the industry Mitch is in or as an educator who is trying to get you to be inspired but not depressed, but also <laughs> pressed at the same time, if you know what I mean. 
Um, other questions? Thank you, Fiona, for that one. Jake. What's easier to find, new oil or gas or a storage site for sequestration? Uh, I think those, those two things kind of go hand in hand anymore. Um, so a lot of the storage sites that are currently being used for sequestration are depleted oil and gas reservoirs. So areas that you already have all the subsurface data that you need to kind of assess the storage capacity. And um, it, I guess the answer to that question is you're not finding a new reservoir for storage. It's finding of the known reservoirs that we have data for what has the capacity for storage. 